time. So um, in the last three weeks, we've been on a series, um, and it's been an amazing series because the feedback has been something else. Uh, last week, we got um, a report or a message from Facebook that uh, our page has been reported that we have been posting some offensive content and that we should explain ourselves. And that shows you how sensitive this jackpot thing is to people. That they are willing to go and report that it's, a, that it's, a, it's, an, it's, <laughs> it's an offensive content. Who are you to say this? Because, but you know this generation that we live in right now is a sensational generation. They don't listen to the old message. They just pick a clip and they make up their mind. And that just shows the level of shallowness of a lot of people. But we'll be looking at, before you join the Japa Badwagon, vital consideration to look into. And we've done an extensive job in the last two weeks. We want to see if we can wrap it up today. If not, the next week Sunday we'll wrap it up and take some questions. But some considerations that we've been able to establish is, number one, you need to establish where you are going. Number two, you need to establish why you want to go. Number three, you need to establish how you are going. Right? I think that's where we stop. So let's look at two other considerations and see if we can wrap that up within the time that is available to us. Before you join the Japa bandwagon, number four, the fourth thing that you need to consider is what will you do when you get there? What will you do when you get there? So if someone is leaving the country to go to school, he or she already knows, I'm going to school. So that means you are going to school. And you're going to be in school for X number of years, depending on the course that you're going to do. But many times when people are going, let's, I'm going to take one, two, two or three examples just to help you get clarity. So let's say you're going to school, so you decide to go to school. I hope you know that if you are going to school, that means that you are going to be in another country and probably for the next four years you will actually be spending money not making money so the question is who will now pay your school fees for that four years because many people think that they will use school to enter when they get there they will drop off and not go to school again because people don't give you the real, real information and many people don't realize that most of the time when you are going as a student your visa is tied to your school and many of the nations have done it in such a way that when you want to get a visa to go to school, you talk to the school, they give you an admission, and they give you, depending on the country, a particular document that you will go to the embassy with to show that this person has paid. And when they are releasing the visa to you in some countries, it's actually the school that approves the visa to be released to you. And when you graduate, they have structured the country in such a way that that's school we now inform them that this person has graduated and once you graduate within 90 days you are expected to leave the country so there are countries now where you think you are going to go and stay and by the time you graduate you discover you can't stay one of the reasons why a lot of people are going to the uk right now is because the uk had that policy where within 90 days you have to go they have reviewed that and now after graduation you now have two years post graduation to work and that's why people are rushing to the UK because the UK is in a recession. They are in trouble right now. And they need your money because their own children will not pay that kind of money. So they need your money so you are like an income generator for them. So they are bringing you so that you can bring your money to come and help them because they have gone out of Brexit and now the Queen has died and the money too is dying. Hello? So now listen. Many people will also tell you, oh, when you go, ah, you can be schooling and working. Hey, don't let people deceive you. There is a number of hours you are permitted to work within the week as a student. Once you exceed that number of hours, it is considered that you are already working in error to what you are supposed to do. And that's why when you go to school, most universities have campus jobs that they will give to students to do on campus. And you need to be careful because people tell you all these things. So what are you going to do? If you say you are relocating, you, may, you have a husband or a wife, you are relocating to go and meet your family, or you have somebody that wants to marry you and you are relocating. The person that you are relocating to go and meet, does the person have a job that is strong enough to take care of all of you? And by the time you get there, what will you also be doing there? Recently, I think about two or three weeks ago, Twitter was agog 
because of a guy that is in the UK that has a fiance or is it fiance or fiance English people? The man in London. Which, which one be the woman? Fiance, right? Uh, that has a fiance in Nigeria and the guy sent a message to say, my babe, as they prepare to come to London, go and learn hairdressing, go and learn this and the babe provoke. Who do you think you are? How can you tell me, me? Go and be learning hairdressing. Go and be... So the girl became angry, thinking that the man is looking down on her. And the guy is saying, you can't come to London without having something to be making small money while we are trying to settle down. The guy now had to speak to his friend to go and tell the girl, to explain to her. He said, no, ah, when I reach London, I will learn it. <laughs> but so, you know, some people, uh, you know, not only, fine, not only face fine, brain no fine. <laughs> so, you need to be very, very careful. Because these things, you know, when I, when I spoke about is your marriage strong enough last week, these are the reality. So what are you going to do when you get there? Because people will promise you, oh, oh, there is a job waiting for you. You just land first. Just land first. In fact, you will stay in my house. This and that, that and this. We have our sister that left like that. The lady told her, oh, you will stay in my house. There no problem. Enter the house and she got a job for her. True, true. But it was our own account that they were paying the salary into and once the money came she gave her the balance he said, he said no uh, uh, you think you'll be staying in the house for free uh, we are going to be sharing and sharing everything so you want to be sending money to nigeria what you think me i'm here to play so be careful so when you are going do you have a game plan because all these lies they are telling you there is job everywhere it's not true it's not. Or else you will get there and you'll still be at the bottom of the pyramid. There are people that were bank managers in Nigeria. There are people that were CEOs in Nigeria that sold houses, sold property, and now they are driving Uber. And now they are doing security. Now they are in the underground. And some of them will remain there for 15 years or more. So, you must have a game plan. What will you do when you get there? So that before you leave, you already have all these things planned out. Many people have ended up remaining at the bottom of the pyramid for decades because of the way they started out. Because of the way they started out. And you just discover that you are just in one factory somewhere, you are just in one place somewhere. Please be careful. Many people are going now as professionals. And as professionals, when you get into the foreign country, maybe what you need to do is to do one or two courses, do one or two certification to carry your degree in Nigeria or your um, certificate in Nigeria to adapt it to their own system and then, pam, you are good to go. And many people say, oh, no, if you are a nurse, there is a job for every nurse. Hey, why do we keep deceiving ourselves like this? That you just go there because you are a nurse, there is a job for every nurse. No, there are certifications that you still need to do to be able to enter the realm where some serious money will come. And many people don't even have the brain to pass that exam. We know people that have been writing the exam for six years, they never pass. Yes, because the exam is instant. It's not uh, somebody with market. There's no lecturer to send to. There's no handout to buy. There's no Nigerian factor. As you are writing the exam, it's computer. You will see your results. It's like I say, instant. Look, many of you have no idea the kind of suffering that undocumented immigrants go through in a foreign land. The kind of pain, the lack of freedom. Your father will die, you will not be able to come. Mother will die, you will not be able to come. All kinds of things, you will not be able to come. And you, you have no idea. But you know, no matter what you say, some people say, let me go and face it by myself. Let me go and face it by myself. No problem. Number five. Let me close. So I can have enough time to move on. The fifth consideration is what I call Wu. And there are many dimensions to this Wu. Four levels of Wu that you need to consider before you jack up. Number one, who is leading you? Who is leading you on this your proposed trip? Who is leading you to go on the journey? Is it God that is leading you to say, okay, my son, my daughter, this is an opportunity I want you to explore. You know, we've dealt with that. Everybody cannot be in Nigeria forever. There's nothing wrong in relocating. Relocating is part of life. We're a global city. We've dealt with that. Or is it just something that you wish to do or you desire to do? It's an aspirational desire. And there's nothing wrong in aspiring. But just be sure that you have all these things covered. Because 
when the trouble comes, it will still affect us. So we want to make sure that we do our job so that when the trouble comes, if it comes, we will know that you know what you are facing. Is there economic reason or poverty that is leading you? Because there are poor people everywhere. I've told you in the last three weeks, there are people born in America that are poor. They are Americans. They born them for America. They are poor. So it's not the location. <laughs> there are people born in London that are poor. So any country you go to, there are citizens of that country that are poor. So it's not about, in Nigeria, people are making money. So no matter the excuse you give, be sure that you have all these things covered. Or is it your spouse? And that's a major problem. And I've told you guys, men, be careful of women. Hello? Even women, God know themselves. Be careful because at the end of the day, you are the one that will suffer. You, the man, you are the one that will suffer. So all this one that your wife will be whispering to you, look, women have been serving apple from Genesis. They are still serving the apple. Be careful not to eat the apple you are not supposed to eat. Oh, you know, my husband, because, you know, in those days, I used to say that, you know, as a pastor, even if everybody leaves you, you are sure you have one member, your wife, that revelation has expired. Because there are pastors now whose wife have said, it's you that God called. And they have moved on. See? So, and then they begin to trade softly. Hey, is it in this country? Hey, let's think of the children. You know, because of the children. Because of, so because of the children is the password. They'll be using to... And then every time there is a crisis in Nigeria, or there is a... Something, you see? You see? Hey, you see? The way they'll be throwing it is like softly and tenderly. And before you know it, because you think you want peace to reign, you now relocate. And you have forgotten that the money you people are making that is making you to live the kind of life you are living is here that is producing the money. You now uproot yourself from here all in the name of I want to give my family a better life. You uproot them there. And the same woman that is moving you, yeah, she has a car. Yeah, she has a driver. Yeah, she has gateman. Yeah, she has house girl. Yeah, she's not really doing much. You are taking care of everything. She now travels with that mindset and gets abroad and expects that even billionaires don't have drivers abroad. She now begins to say, ah, I can't drive, oh, I'm tired, oh, school run. And you begin to, sh you, it will shock you. The don't verse. No weapon formed against my microphone shall prosper. Every feminine weapon. Hello? It will shock you. Because the question is, your wife is leading you. Does she have the money to do it? You will now close down your business, shut down things, and you don't realize that when you are not there to run things, the money will not come the way it used to come. And then by the time you people now get there, she's still expecting to live the kind of life she used to live. So, I've sat down with many couples, and I've asked questions, so my sister, this woman that goes, so which job you go go do when you reach there now to take care of yourself and the family? And they are looking. Because many of them are still expecting the man to now be giving them allowance of Nigerian money, chain to Naira, Naira to dollar. I'm telling you the realities that people don't tell you. So who is leading you? Is it your friends and family? See, ah, guys, come, a PhD, there is scholarship. They just tell you all kinds of things. They don't give you full story. Well, just be sure that whoever is leading you is also powerful enough to sustain you. The second who, who are you? Have you done an honest personal evaluation and assessment of yourself? Because I hope you know that location does not change people. If you are lazy and visionless in Nigeria, you relocate to America, you are lazy and visionless. You will suddenly become hardworking because you relocated. I can't come and kill myself. If that's your software, you will get there. I can't come and kill myself. And it's even easier for you to be complacent because there are many things that are basic that you will enjoy almost for nothing. So you just see that 10 years have gone by and you have not done anything meaningful with your life. 
yes you are eating and you are looking fresh I hope you know that there are poor and confused people all over the world and anywhere you are going to there are poor people there I've said it over and over again know who you are know who you are know who you are let's move on because of time number three the third who who will welcome you when you get there who will welcome you when you get there who will welcome you when you get there let me tell you something the people you meet first when you enter any country determines your destiny in that country now i'm telling you the truth because the quality of advice they will give you is the one they know if someone if you go into a country now and the person you meet is a security person or working on the ground or cleaning dead body working in care home or he's a, a taxi driver once you come to say, ah, there's taxi, oh, even who can get taxi, that's the only thing they will tell you. They will never tell you that now that you are here, these are, these are the options because they don't know better. So that person you are going to meet, what quality of life do they have? But there are people you meet that once you can say, no, 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 guys, you can't go that route. Once you go that route, you remain at the bottom. I will advise you, look for two, three thousand, apply for this course. Do this course. Within six months, you have a certification. You start as an intern here within, and before you know it, because of the people they met that gave them the right kind of information that gave them the right kind of understanding all of a sudden since we shift i was speaking in florida years ago and after i finished speaking the guy walked up to me and said you know i love your preaching. i love i love your preaching man i love your preaching but you know you know someone i'm an ex-con you know i'm an ex-con you know and nobody wants to employ an ex-con ex-con ex he was just talking ex-con ex-con as if he's in liberty so i asked him a question you are an ex convict. Nobody wants to employ you. Why can't you employ yourself? I say, why must you think that somebody should start a job and employ you? I said, do you know that? Whether I said, me, I have a company in this country. And I'm employing people in your country. And I'm not in your country. And I have businesses and investment here. And you, you say, because you are an ex con and you are an American. I'm an ex con. I say, did you go to register a company? They say, you can't register because you are an ex con. I said, because when you want to register a company, they won't ask you whether you are escorted or not. But when you want to get a job, the person that wants to give you a job must do their due diligence. But if it's your life, go get a job, go get a company registered, open a company account, and think of what you can do. That's right, guy. You, 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 you're wise, man. You're wise, man. Are you, I said, so are there no things you used to do that you can turn into a business? Say, so, you know what? That's true, man. I used to do lawn, you know, do lawn mowing, you know, Hoover. You know, I'm on, learn, da, 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 da. I said, so start and send out Ivy and begin to do that. Within two years, he registered the company. He was able to employ four people. By the time I went back there two years later, he was doing well. He had started doing lawn mowing, landscaping, and all those stuff. But now, what changed the information he got? There are people that have relocated. They have been on the guy. Somebody else goes, no, 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 no. You can do um, internet security. You can do this course within six weeks. You can do this course within... The, and the kind of people you meet matters so don't go there and be limited by the people you meet hello time my first trip to the uk was in 1997. the person i went to meet by the time i landed in his house he was living in a council flat even the lift was smelling of urine as we we're going up to his floor when I entered the place, the guy was already telling me some things, this and that and that and that and that. And that gave me a clear understanding of what I'm telling you. So we started speaking, oh, so if somebody wants to stay here, if they say, oh, you can do this, you can join this, you can do that. He was saying all kinds of stuff. The conference I went for, a day before the end of the conference, bam, I meet a guy. Wow, long time. Ah, you are here. We were all together growing up as young christians he's been in the uk i met him now these are two different set of people and he told me where are you say ah what you know say, man, cancel flat no 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 ah i bought the house come to my house i moved to his house the same discussion i had with this other guy i started having with him and i started getting different answers 
in the same London. The guy said, no, 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 no. Talos of everywhere. Ah! Oh my, oh, for the next 10 years. The guy was telling me as of 1997 that he does not use credit card. He doesn't have debts. Everything. They, ah! And this other one said, you can't survive here. Oh, you must have credit card. You must. And, this one, and I still know the two of them till now. The other one is still in that club, council flats. He's still there. This other one has bought like five houses. He's a billionaire. He pounds. He's my friend. I know him. Now, so I'm telling you, who are you going to meet there? So the fact that somebody is helping you, you will arrive in their house, does not mean you must use them as the picture of your destiny for that nation. You must begin to seek superior ideas so that you will not remain at the bottom and think that that's all there is. Because you know, when you don't know the truth, you think that everybody is a fake person. How do they make all this money? Nobody the same money when they try to make what nothing feel made. No. There is a way to make money legally and do it well. So, who will welcome you when you arrive in the, in the country? Not the one that an illegal person will come and welcome you. Somebody that FBI is already looking for. And then he said, don't worry, you don't have me on the water airport. <laughs> I can't come into the airport. Tomas Jade cross the bridge to the other side <laughs> because he doesn't have documents. <laughs> He's afraid that they will capture him on camera. And he's driving and he's uh, passing corner, corner streets. <laughs> Who is your point person? What do they do? What is their own level and stand in the nation? How much do they know about the nation and the opportunities that there are? Because there are some people, all they know is what they know. They have been in a country for 10 years. They don't know anything apart from the location they are in. There are people like that. They, are not, they don't explore for any knowledge. They are just survival mentalists. And if you go there, you remain like that. So all these are vital consideration because who you know and those you meet first will go a long way in affecting things. Let's wrap up with number four. Who is helping you? I hope you know that it's very expensive to travel. To relocate to any country now, depending on whatever format you decide to use, is minimum, minimum of five million. <coughs> You're talking 5, 10, 15 million. If you're a family of four, you're talking like 25, 30 million. No, because many of you don't know. Even tickets, now economy ticket, go and find out how much is economy ticket that is for people. So, ticket alone. <laughs> just economy, we're not talking no upper class or middle class or premium, just economy for family of four. So, if you have 10 million, 15 million, 20 million, to invest in relocation, are you telling me there is nothing you can put 10 million, 5 million, 15 million into a year that can change your story? Because as bad as you people keep saying Nigeria is, crisis creates opportunities. That bad, 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 bad is actually an opportunity to make money. Because instead of you analyzing the problem, be a part of solving the problem. And money flows in exchange for problem that you solve. So, when it comes to the money, because many of you, they will say, don't worry. Do you know that banks are even doing it now? 419, you know Nigerian banks, many of them are 419 banks. They are now arranging uh, accounts for people. Yeah, even banks are arranging accounts for people. For you, they will say they will borrow you money to go abroad, to go to school. They won't borrow you money to do something here. They will say, bring your father, bring your mother. But they are borrowing money. They have opened different portal now for international travel. Then you will now say somebody will put money in your account so that you will just use it to enter. And once you get there, you begin to work to pay school fees. I can't tell you how many people have gone that after year one, they are stranded. They are now trying to defy admission. Before you know it, they entered into illegality. All kinds of things that people will not tell you. Listing and listing well. There are many people out there that want to return to Nigeria. They have suffered enough, but shame no feel let them come back. Some of them, there is nothing to come back to. They have sold all their property. And all the pictures you see on social media, they are posing beside the car. Look, when you travel, you don't need money to buy a car. Oh. Hello? You can buy a car and pay for seven years. Pay for ten years. So don't be fooled by all those cars. You can go to auction and get a car at... So who is helping you with the visa and travel process? Are they genuine? Because most of you, it is when you get to Mutala Mohammed, you discover your visa is fake. No, no, no. You now discover that ah, they will just put the ah, no, who did this to you? And the person is gone. 
So they will tell you they have done. So who are they genuine? Are they giving you vital and accurate information of what is really on ground? I hope you know that many of these supposed travel consultants they have never left Nigeria before. Many of them have never gone anywhere. They go and study online and be deceiving you. Oh, they are, they are a very good country. Online, online is gone. Nigerians come there. You share one there. There's work there. We went to Jerusalem and we saw some people. The guy was telling me that's a Nigerian me, South African Mubawale, Eromilo, he said, I'm from Nigeria. I came in through South Africa. That they told him that there is work in Israel, but they're Israel. <laughs> and you left South Africa. Pretoria and Mwasa. But he said, What are you doing? Ah, in Ubulawa. He said, He's just coming out of the farm after like 60 days. You know, all this farm, in, you know, all this movie you see where they have like plantation where they do wine. They just lock them up in the farm like slaves. They are feeding them and using them like they say he, he just came out after like 60 something days that you see how i can help him he's been trying to collect so that he can just get money to go back to something or come back to nigeria no i'm telling you <laughs> have they been to that country before do they know the real things that you need to have i think i told you last week of the guy that left nigeria got to uh, ukraine and died the same day yeah, because of uh, he didn't wear correct clothes. Many of you, let me tell you something. If I tell you about snow, there is no way I can explain it to you. The highest explanation is we we'll go put you inside freezer and cover you. But let, let, it's still not an explanation. You see, you have to see it to believe it. I'm telling you, nobody can explain snow to you. The, the best we can do is to say, why we we'll lock you inside freezer for one hour? That's the best, but it's still not compared to snow. And let me tell you, many of these shoes you people are wearing that you think you are wearing shoes, you are not wearing shoes. All these are designer shoes. When you are inside winter and snow enter, I have been in London before. I have cried in Paris before. I cried as in human being, elderly man of God, and they cry like this. Because the London one, I thought I had correct leather shoe. You know how you go pride like when I just saw that my leg was not, you know. As I'm here now, I'm moving my toe so I can feel it. I just saw that my toe could not separate. <laughs> I just, I'm just sensing that ah, something is wrong. Ah. So at the point, I'm like, ah, my leg is like, ah, and I'm every, ah. I now got to it. So I said, please, I don't know. The, the guy said, oh man, you're wearing the wrong shoes, man. <laughs> you're wearing the wrong shoes, man. One other guy said, no, 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 remove the shoe. You've got to heat it up or you're, you're, you're going to get into a psychiatric. He was talking one grammar. That's how they remove my shoe, put it there, eat that, help me to put out what I'm telling you. Paris, you know, Paris people, French, French people, they can be very terrible because they believe that their French language is superior to English language. So a Frenchman, even when they understand English, if you can't speak le français, le pra, le pra, they don't... Now nah food, I go look for... <laughs> I left the hotel thinking I would just see food here. Oh, next one. You know, they have all this bread that is very hard, no food. Oh, no, pizza area, pizza area. That's why they walk up for I walk up. I don't know road to hotel. <laughs> and all I had in my pocket was dollar, pounds, and naira. So I kept speaking, this hotel, this hotel, you know, taxi, car, all of them were just going. No, 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 no. I was there for almost one hour. Nobody was answering me. I, no, I called Nigeria. Our administrator is still alive. His name was Pastor Richard. I called, I was crying over here. I was crying. I said, Pastor Richard, this is bad. This, nobody is answering me. I was crying because all my body has frozen. I didn't carry the clothes. I thought I would just go down, get something to eat and return. After a while, I saw some people that were black. So I get to say, my people, is there any? <laughs> is there any of you that is from Africa, Nigeria, Ghana? 
Eu sei, Ganyan, a Zacuaba. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh. That's how the guy entered Ukraine, got to the hostel. He didn't wake up the next morning because the, 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 the eating system was not, and they didn't tutor him on the kind of clothes to wear. So listen and listen well. To Jackpa or not is a personal issue. So the ball is in your court. But remember that good idea is not always God's idea. And before you decide to join, make sure you do your due diligence. Because my name is Olumide Oladapo Emmanuel. I am your pastor. But I have decided at this level of my life that I will not allow people to use me. Counseling is free. But consultancy attracts a fee. I've spent three weeks to help you. I've been teaching you the truth, giving you guidance. When and if you decide to jack back and you get into trouble and you are now calling for counseling or prayer, it won't be counseling or prayer. It will be consultancy. We'll send you an invoice and charge you to be able to answer you. Because now we have given you free. If you don't use the wisdom you have gotten now to plan your life, may the Lord help you. Thank you.